After Effects tutorial, how to create your own very cool sort of like clean, super dope, like gradient, like off white, a little bit bit off of that. Um, just like fun little Twitch overlay, Twitch starting soon animation screen blah 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 you guys already know i like to do these fun little twitch little revamps and stuff like that and it's a little series where i just show you guys how to make your own really cool own little assets really fun really easy hopefully really quick as well for you guys um this one here happens to be probably the most simplest one we've done so far but however i think it's honestly one of the most i guess pretty aesthetic wise and i hope you guys are enjoying it um if you guys can't notice i don't know if you guys watch esports but if you guys ever watch the european L lcs which is the lec or whatever um they have these really cool gradients and these cool little assets and i was like that that's pretty cool. I kind of make it to a like a starting soon screen, so that's exactly what I did with the whole little glitch effect as well. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start off in Photoshop, then go into where it, it says After Effects here, right? And then I'll just show you guys how to do all this really cool stuff. It's very simple, very easy, and just looks super, super classy and really, really clean. And I can't wait to show you guys. Um, with all that being said, two likes on the video, you guys will see you down below as always. And I'll mostly be the PSD and the After Effects file for you guys. And oh, also this. This is going to be in the description for you guys, so you guys can download it. These are just the very simple little assets that I use in today's video. Um, I just made them in Illustrator, just using the simple duplication tools. Um, yeah, not too hard whatsoever. I just, I, I, it was so simple. I felt like I was wasting time if I showed you guys how to do it. Um, and just give you guys the assets. So it's the, that these little project files in here will be in the description down below for you guys. So just go ahead and check that out. Now, one other tip as well, because of course you don't have to always use purple and blue. But of course, this case here today, I'm gonna, I am gonna be using purple and blue. But if you guys want to choose any different color, like let's say you guys want to choose a color, I'm gonna say this blue right here. Let's say you looked at this blue, you're like, I want this blue and I like this blue. Let's just say you fill that in with a new layer right here. Now, if you guys just make a duplicate of it, you can either press Control J on your keyboard and just move it over, right? So you can see the two colors side by side. Um, all you have to do now is press Control I on your keyboard. So that's Control plus I, just like so. And you get yourself a really, really nice complementary color, which will most likely, I would say like eight times out of 10 will work out as a color scheme that you might really, really like and you might want to ride with and go with. So I would honestly say, if you're looking to find like really cool color schemes, try that little, little trick out and hopefully you guys will figure out something really cool that you guys will like and enjoy and use. So with that being said, let's just get this thing going and uh, yeah, let's just let's get this started. All right guys, so as for the Photoshop part, of course I'm gonna start off with the gradient that I am using in today's video here today. So I'm gonna unlock this layer really quickly and show you guys my gradient overlay. So this gradient overlay happens to be a nice little purple to blue gradient as you guys can already tell on um, the purple hex code is actually three zero zero one four five and then on the right hand side here this blue is actually zero five two three five five so those are hex codes you guys want to put those in you guys get the same exact colors that i'm using in today's video um in this case here i'm also wondering if it'll be cool if you guys can like move around where my where, where currently my little see my little dot right here and then only like move the hue graph to find these really cool values that could honestly work as well if you guys are looking for nice cool colors to work with um, yeah, I wish that's not not a bad idea, honestly, either. So those are the hex codes. A little bit of a voice crack. We won't talk about it. Um, okay, so you guys are wondering maybe what was this really cool font that I used in today's video? It's called Future Future PT Bold Italic. Now I'm not entirely sure if this is free or not. I'm I'm not like it's not coming in my head when I actually got this font. I'm um, starting starting. Oops, let's put capital letters starting right here right and i'll put soon on the bottom so the way i just made that duplicate is i just hold alt and shift and then just on my layer selected just select on the actual canvas and move down now i'm gonna put soon as well yeah i have no idea but if it's free i'll put it in the description for you guys if it's not free i guess i'll give you guys a link to actually find it but you can use honestly any clean font whatsoever that you can think of um i actually might actually change the soon here let me just show you guys really quick so to get this really cool simple um i just spit a little bit that was disgusting <laughs> um to get this really cool, simple little sort of like soon in uh, an obvious little mm, outline. There we go. English is sometimes hard, guys. Uh, what I'm going to do is just lower my fill all the way down to zero. And I'm going to double click on this actual soon layer right here. And I'm going to go into my layer styles. I'm going to go into where it says stroke. I'm going to go to where it says position. Use inside. I'll make a nice sort of a cleaner sort of outline. And then make my size, I would say, three or two. How is... No, let's go with two, right? Yeah, let's go with two. I'm press OK, and that's good to go. Now, I honestly might, like I just said a few seconds ago, might go with this font, Closeness, Closeness. I believe this is a free font as well. And I think it does look pretty cool as well, honestly. And you can also, let's just change this, Um, what do you call it? The VA right here to make it a little more skinnier, or excuse me, more compact, right? And then we can even kind of like take the VA a little bit and then move that around, right? Kind of mess with the font a little bit without making it look too weird or distorted. I would say, honestly, this is still a little bit too weird and distorted, so I'm gonna fix it a little bit. But there you go. We have the starting soon, and then obviously we're gonna do this over here as well. These little simple dash, dash, little slide, slide, little, what do you call these things? Italics, holy crap. 
They are called some called something. They're called I forgot what they're called. What English language am I? I don't even know. What are these slashes? Holy sh should I keep them? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go with this now. I think I would think that these slash slash that starting soon is looking really good. I might put this together again though. There we go. Move this a little closer. So now. This stacking right here is a little bit different than what I had originally, right? When it comes to when uh, when it comes to let me show you guys when it comes to like a little bit of a, a different sort of vibe and font. But give it all, give it your all. If you have a different theme to go with, definitely go with it and run with it. I'll make this a little more bigger, and I would say this looks pretty good. Now I also had another idea. Let's go ahead and just add these in these little assets, right? And the ways they need to be added in, right? Also, if you guys are wondering how I just group these together all together, all you have to do is uh, basically control click or click on the first one. I'll ungroup it really quickly, right? So I can show you guys if you guys don't know already. And I would say put it in a group because when you put things in a group, if I go back in here really quickly, you'll see that when you put things in a group, it actually makes a pre-composition, which any whatever sex you put on it, it'll actually just apply to everything in that little pre-comp in a, in a way it's just basically a group and it makes everything a lot more easier. That's why I'm working in Photoshop first because I'm more comfortable in it. And also most of my, my subscribers are comfortable in it. And moving into After Effects just is very simple sort of drag and drop little effects that you have to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add that one here. That is good. Now we have to add it over here as well. <clears throat> and then we add a big word that says soon as well right on the bottom now this is a trick guys in order to get the exact sort of concept in which like you see this scroll through this uh my cap box is on you see this little little effect right here now you're not supposed to originally see the actual rectangle while you're inside after effects for this effect but since i rash the layer while the stroke was still active and i didn't uh, not rasterize a layer. I made it into a smart object and not rasterize a layer, which means if I were to rasterize any layer, right, with this stroke on, I'm gonna do it first. I'm gonna erase first, so I can show you guys really quick. So if I erase with a stroke, you guys will notice that it keeps the same sort of like um, stroke pattern and/or the stroke itself wherever you erase, right? But if you were to kind of use this and you say, "Hey, I want to rasterize," and you want to erase it, that's not the eraser. And you want to erase it now you will see that there's no longer an attached stroke so the effect for it to only work you have to make sure and i would say this one right here not this soon that that one's fine but this one right here the big one right and we're going to call this big soon <laughs> okay um we want to make sure we rasterize not rasterize excuse me we want to convert to a smart object and that'll make sure the effect that happens in later in the video um comes out the way it actually needs to come out so I had another idea as well where I wanted to keep everything white in a sense, but you could also really honestly change these colors of these little dots maybe or any other effect that you guys want to go with. And you can change them to like any like sort of like nice color. I would say like this little green here <sighs> might be badass to go with, but I'm going to go with everything being white in this case. But in any other case, just make sure you guys go ahead and also the stacking with the actual text. You don't have to use the exact same way as this. You can make soon, you know, be on the on the right hand side here with a little more bigger so it actually fits um, right. Let me just show you guys a little bit. Um, okay, this shouldn't be hard. There we go, right? Just kind of have it like that. And or you can have soon in the middle, you can have it on the top, you can have it like really shrinked off to this side here. I'm just trying to give you guys different ideas of stacking it. Um, because your text stacking is also kind of like a, the uh has a vibe in its own as well. So I'm just gonna leave it as how I have it here. But for your case, you guys can go ahead and do whatever you guys want to do. But I didn't group this together. So I did I actually like segue off of forgetting the group things and anyway, with the group things we're just gonna simply just either control click on the actual layers that you want to get grouped so I have all three now selected I can press control G on my keyboard to then group it all together and or if you had it all in a sort of like straight line you want to group everything in that little section click on the top layer and then hold shift click on the bottom layer and everything in between those two clicks it'll actually group those uh, or select those as well and then you can just control G to group them together and you can just call this text now I have that there. I would say I'm pretty happy about that. And I had one other thing right here. Uh, it was my actual other pack, but that's okay. We'll just kind of like leave it as so. But I had a little, you see those little lines right here? I had them on the right-hand side. It doesn't really matter right now. But uh, I would say right here, right now, you're basically done in this case. Whatever you want to add, if you want to add any cool little sort of like, um, like square patterns, uh, really honestly anything just kind of has a go with like, a, like an outline aesthetic you can even like do something like super cheesy as like doing little X's um, if you guys want to do the X's you can just do it like so where you kind of have a cool little stroke as well you can do some X's going across and then you can animate these as well if you guys want to but honestly anything that has an outline and it's very very clean um, or very descriptive if you guys want like I don't know like I said I had a little bit of off-white sort of um, inspirations you can use like little things like this starting soon like that 
right? You know what I mean? It's just uh, how that's off-white brand is very descriptive, so they have usually quotations a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, set, I'm gonna keep it like this, and I'm gonna make sure I name everything as I uh, as I want to right now. So big soon, we'll call this two. It already is. We'll call this one. And then this doesn't need to be here for this case. I'm gonna press delete on my keyboard. So now what I have is everything I'm gonna put into uh, After Effects, which makes it super super easy, and that's not all named and all that cool stuff. So all you gotta do is just save your actual save as, right? Save your PNG as whatever you wanna not PNG, excuse me, your PSD to whatever you wanna save it to, and then we'll open it up in After Effects in the next clip right now, hopefully. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're inside After Effects and my product is already saved. So all I have to do is go to file. We're going to go to where it says import. We're going to go to where it says file again. And I'm going to already have it on my other monitor right now. So I'm looking for my actual PSD and I see mine. I called it offline screen to import. And so this little window is going to pop up after you import. And you guys want to make sure the settings are as followed. Editable layer styles and also your import kind is composition, retain layer sizes. And this will help you guys in the sense if you guys are in the document size, which you should be in the document size of. Let me show you guys really quick as well so you guys see a, a visual. 1920 by 1080 and resolution 72 and or 300, whichever one you guys want to rock with, honestly. It doesn't really matter too much, but I like to have it at 300 simply because my text sizes. Um, I'm more used to my text sizes being at a 300 resolution. Um, if you guys don't know what that means, it's okay. Nice to 20 by 1080. But basically what using retain layer sizes inside After Effects will do is it'll make sure that it'll, it'll transmit um, that layer size into the composition. So it'll make sure you have to actually change anything and whatnot. So all I'm going to do now is you'll see it says offline screen to composition. We'll just simply double click right there. Or that's going to say whatever your name is of your actual PSD. And what's going to open up is what you already had exactly inside Photoshop exactly as you guys left it. So you can see here, the text group here is a, a nice little composition together. So if I just double click on this really quickly, you'll see that it's all in its own little individual little section, but I hit my mic, sorry. Um, but it's grouped in together. So it's very easy to kind of work with and make sure everything is edited in that little aspect right there. So I find that really, really cool. So now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I go ahead and just add in the little glitch effect that you guys see, hopefully in the beginning of the video, if you guys remember, um, where the whole entire text in the middle is kind of glitching. So in this case here, I actually found a file it's called, it's called a displacement map, I guess you would say, or we're gonna use it as a displacement map and it's going to be in the description down below i'm going to just drag it in on my side over here really quickly it's called glitch stock uh glitch stock footage um i guess it's one of the things many people use in the sense of actually applying a glitch to an actual text effect so i actually picked it up for you guys i'll leave the description download for you guys as well and uh simply what you do is you want to just simply drag it in right to the top of your actual layers and uh, what you want to do automatically is just hide them just hide that and this little mute button right here or that little uh, the volume button here is saying that there's audio attached to this so before you actually before I actually get rid of it let's go ahead and make sure we make this bigger just by uh, selecting this little side on this right hand side and then just scrolling it up by holding shift as well right here <laughs> cool now we have a nice little bigger sort of uh it, it'll fit the actual ratio it doesn't really need to fit too much because honestly we're only focusing on the text but in this case if you guys want to put anything around it as well in this uh, in its vicinity of getting affected by the displacement map then you want to make sure you have it of course that size it needs to be um also don't worry about it being too weird and kind of glit uh how you say um low quality as you would say or too too stretched out because we're only really using what the actual stock food, uh, footage is which is basically a really crazy spazzed out sort of like cool little lines going across which will help out the displacement map so now that i have it all uh, size and whatnot i can go ahead and hide this and also like i said this before this little uh volume button is actually the actual sound from it so you want to mute that as well and uncheck it so what you want to do now is we're going to add a right click on this little canvas right here and we're going to go right click new and we're going to where it says adjustment layer so now it says adjustment layer. You guys want to go to where it says window and you want to make sure you have your effects and presets panel open. You guys remember this from before and you see already have it typed out right here. You can type in D I S P L and then under the store, it says displacement map. What you want to do is drag the displacement map right on top of the actual adjustment layer right there. And you want to make sure you then change your displacement layer to the actual glitch stock footage, right? And if you didn't do that, it will actually show up as nothing and nothing happening. So now you'll see Anything below this adjustment layer is gonna affect. It's gonna be affected, excuse me, by the glitchy sort of like uh, video that you guys saw. I'm gonna quickly pre-render pre this for you guys. So you can see what's happening. So you can see it's actually super, super glitchy now, and everything below us is all this stuff below it as well. Uh, like I said before, if you guys want to choose different assets to be a part of the glitch, I'm personally gonna be moving uh, uh, the actual text. Um, below it but everything else basically above it so nothing else is getting affected by the glitch and we'll add other effects to the actual starting soon or the soon part right here on the bottom but that's enough for the pre-render sorry right here you see how like it's very very quick and it's very very i guess you would say um i guess you would say static in a way we want to make sure we kind of make this a little bit more dramatic so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take my maximum horizontal distance um displacement excuse me right here 
and we're gonna change this to 50 and we're gonna change the maximum vertical displacement to 25. If you guys wanna mess around with this, you guys definitely can. I just like these two little ratios and it's nice little even numbers. Um, so you see what happens now is it's very, very distorted. It's very, very harsh and it's a lot more, I guess you'd say, glitchy, right? I would say it's more, it has that more of a glitchy element. But if I would show you guys right now, it's very quick and I did not like that. So what I have to do is I have to go to my actual glitch footage, right? Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the glitch footage I'm gonna go to where it says time. I'm gonna go to where it says time stretch. And I guess this is basically how you guys actually, I had to Google it. I guess Google it, <laughs> why did I say that so weird? I had to Google it. And I guess this is how you guys make things like slow motion um, inside After Effects. And what I ended up doing is just typing in 500% and I pressed okay. <laughs> so what happens here is the actual footage itself is getting extended by like, I guess 500 times or so, but it's getting a little bit slower since we of course made the animation or the video uh, basically get stretched out. So if you can see now, if I render this out, it shouldn't be as like quick and super, super quick and super annoying in the case. But right here, I think that is a little bit more sort of like doable. I think that's not as, you know, seizure inducing, you know what I mean? It's, it's a little more subtle, a little more clean, and we're not going to have it do the, uh, the glitch the entire way, of course. So we're going to make sure we figure that out as well. But let me also do, like I said before, put everything else besides the text above it because I don't want that to be in a glitch. So you can see now what's only ha what's only gonna be glitching is the text itself. So that's very, very simple to do. Just simply move your layers right above that adjustment layer. And you can see that the only thing now affected is whatever, whatever's below it. And uh, I would also say the background is also a little bit glitchy as well because it's under there, um, but it looks cool. So I'm not gonna keep it like that. So uh, now that that is done, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to quickly adjust it so that it only glitches in a certain spot. So all you have to do is use, uh, just remember the keyframe or remember the shortcut, Control, Shift, and D on your keyboard, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, let's say at one second, we'll start the glitch then. So I'm press Control, Shift, D at around one frame. I just pressed Control, Shift, D and it came up with some things on my uh, recording software. So I hope that's not gonna be like an uh, issue, bro. Can we not do that? Hold on. All right, guys, now that my actual shortcuts aren't going to get in my way, um, I also uh, realized that I also forgot to tell you guys uh, I made a mistake. The Starting soon in the bottom right here, the soon word right here on the bottom right here should not be rasterized either. It should be stayed as simple, simply, excuse me, as a stroke. You shouldn't rasterize and or um, create into a smart object. Either of those will not work, and I didn't realize that until I was just trying to... Um, All right, guys, now that my actual shortcuts won't get in my way, uh, I also realized as well that the bottom here, the word soon here, shouldn't be rasterized and or made into a smart object. None of those should be either or, but it's also still a good thing I actually said it um, because it also will help someone in the future actually understand what the difference is between rasterizing and smart objects are. However, you shouldn't make it so that this is either rasterized, which means this right here, right? It shouldn't be rasterized or the stroke is no longer there, the actual layer style, and also should not be um, smart object where the actual layer style is hidden inside the smart object itself, right? You should not actually do either of those. Make sure that it's simply just simply a text and hopefully um, it's not too hard to fix either. All you, all you have to do is just honestly just re um, save the file itself and then honestly just throw back uh, the import project inside After Effects again. And you can even copy and paste the actual adjustment layers. If you press Control C and press Control V, it'll actually copy and paste the actual layer styles onto the display of maps. So it's a really quick fix because that's what I basically just did just now. So now this PSD here is actually no longer a, uh, it's no longer, excuse me, a uh, just regular PSD uh, a smart object, right? And I also noticed that because of this right here. I, I noticed that I didn't have my layer styles, which also means that there's no stroke being activated right now. So the effects that I put on later will not work. So I just made sure I want to clear that up for you guys um, to simply just not make that mistake. And I apologize for putting that in the video, but it just makes it a little more smoother in that sense. But also it makes sense in the long run. Um, okay, anyway, the whole point is being able to press Control Shift D and I can do that now, okay? So I'm gonna go to one second here and press Control Shift D on my adjustment layer right here, okay? Control shift D and then basically what that a little effect there does or something that little shortcut does is basically makes it so that it actually splits the layer in a way kind of just saying hey you can delete either side and it just makes another duplicated layer so if I want to say hey I don't need this anymore I can just simply just click on it and press delete and there you go the reason why I cut out one second here I'm gonna say I'm gonna move up a few frames or so I'll say right about here and I'm gonna press control shift D again when I make sure I select on my adjustment layer if you don't select on it you'll most likely be able to cut everything else and you don't want to do that you can press alt uh, excuse me, control Z to go back, but make sure you select on the actual adjustment layer itself, then press control shift, then D. 
<sighs> and then you'll basically be able to see if I just hide this really quickly. It won't glitch until it hits that point. And that's basically what you guys want to do and kind of make these um, little random spots where it actually cuts. So I'm going to say right here, that's okay. I'm going to say right here, I'm going to press Control Shift D. I'm going to delete that right there. And I'm going to make a little bit of a longer one. I'll see right about there, Control Shift D. So it's going to be a little bit shorter, a little bit longer. So I'm going to make a really short one. I'll say like right here, Control Shift D, delete this here. And I'm going to say like really short, click on it, Control Shift D. And then I'll say one more sort of like mid-range to kind of get over the whole Control Shift D thing. I would say right about there, Control Shift D, delete. So what's going to happen here is this is you cut out the adjustment layers with the same exact effects, everything. If I press play really quickly, you'll see it'll only uh, distort right there for a longer period right there, very short period and a longer period there. So it kind of just make it a little more, I guess, randomized in a way and it kind of makes it a little more better in a sense. Um, so I would definitely say just kind of cut things out in a way that's a little more random and not too uniform. Um, so yeah, I would say I like how that looks right there. So now I'm going to do now is the little effects that I put on the word soon to make it look like what it should look like. Um, you guys will notice, like I said, you guys will notice a difference if you guys rasterize and or smart object the layer. You guys will not get the same exact effect and it actually makes a difference because when you actually go ahead and apply the effects, it just simply won't do what it should do. And you guys will notice if you guys don't have it, um, the way I sh you should have it. Excuse me. So. I'm going to where it says soon copy here because it's the big word on the soon. Um, also, I want to make sure that I actually ended up making sure that, yeah, it was already at top. Okay, cool. So this right here, I'm going to go to where it says effect. I'm going to go to where it says trans uh, transitions here. And I'm going to go to where it says CC light wipe right here. Cool. So for the sake of the video, I'm just going to make the completion go up for a second. So you'll see this right here. Right here is what you want to have. You want to be able to see these really cool sort of like, you want to be able to see the actual shape, the circle itself. Um, in this case, if you guys can see and it looks somewhat like this right now, then you're on the right track. If you don't see anything going on um, on the inside where it's like a little shady, little white spots here, that is means you basically rasterize and or didn't keep the layer as, just basically keeping the layer with a stroke on it is all you need to know. I, don't, I shouldn't really be saying don't do this, don't do that. Just make sure that your PSD has the actual stroke layer when you guys go ahead and save it and put it into After Effects. That's all I mean. Um, so I don't want to confuse you guys, but it'll make sure that this effect is looking like this. And this is definitely what you guys would want. So what I want to do is I'm going to change my shape from a round edge though to a square because simply I have a lot of more squares going, little bolded fonts. Um, so I'm going to say the squares is definitely where I want to go. As you can see a square in there. <laughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to go ahead and say now, um, you see this little anchor point that I'm moving around. All I do is click on it and move it around. I'm going to say I'll move it like right around here. So I'm going to do is I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to and keyframe the completion and then the centering. So the reason I'm doing that is because the completion, of course, is how much and how dramatic it is right here. Right. And then the centering is basically moving that anchor point that I'm moving around manually. Right. I want to keyframe both of those. I'm going to press U on my keyboard. If you guys do not know already, when you have things keyframed, excuse me, if you want to open them up and basically do it really quickly, all you have to do is press U on your keyboard. Right. Just like that. You can see I press U on my keyboard. It'll open up all my keyframes and I'll be able to see it right there. And it makes it super easy for us. So I'm going to go ahead and say right before it glitches, I want to make sure I kind of have this completion going up from zero. This, the first keyframe should be at zero, by the way. I'll put this at zero, right? And then move it up a little bit. And the completion over here, I'll just make this around about, let's just do it like a lot, like, uh, like eight. Yeah, I'll say eight. Let's just move it through. We'll see what eight looks like. Okay, I like where eight's going. I'm actually going to move it beyond this first point. I'm going to say right here. And I like eight, but it's not good enough. So I'm gonna say like around 20, maybe. Uh, let's try that. Okay, 20 is definitely way better. Okay, so I'm gonna say around 20. So I move the completion from zero to 20%, and basically like a mid range or uh, mid range point <laughs> uh, between the first glitch and the second glitch here. So I'm gonna say right about there is pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say the centering here. I'm gonna move this from uh, wherever it is right now, which is that the first point where I moved it at 14, 13. 189 i'm gonna move the actual first number right here just move this over towards the left and not too much i'm gonna say like right about here to where like the first o is and i'll move it down just a little bit right so we kind of get this a little bit more of a, a more fascinating sort of like kind of follow through around the words yeah do i like that okay that's not bad that's not bad at all okay cool i do like how that looks so i'm gonna go ahead and just say around here i'm gonna make sure this completion goes back down to like maybe about five or so I'll make sure this goes back this way or so. And this is very randomized, right? So it's kind of going the first little completion here from zero to 20. And this right here is 20 to five. And I move this location from uh, from right side to the left side. So you can see it moves over to the left side. Now it's moving back over to the right side while also the completion, meaning the effect itself is not being super, super dramatic. Uh, it's supposed to be very, very nice and simple. 
right? And I think that looks pretty good. <laughs> I just want to let that render out really quick. Um, okay, and now it's rendered out. Let me go back to the beginning, right? Okay, yeah, that's very subtle. I like how that looks for sure, for sure. Now, I do have one other effect on. Now, if you guys want, you guys can keep going with the completions. You can just go all the way to the end or whatever you guys need to go off, off uh, to the end too, excuse me. But make sure, as always, guys, if you whatever your length is of your actual file size, let's say you want to make a 10 second video, you want to be able to that, just loop that through the stream itself. All you have to do is make sure that you start off, or excuse me, end off with whatever you started off with. So what that means is just simply you can press control C V and then make sure, or just copy paste these right here. That's what I would do. I would say control C on these two points right here. All I have to do is literally highlight over them and then end it off with those same exact points. That way you make sure you're at the same stopping point. I just, I press control V by the way to paste them. Um, make sure the same, same as like the stopping point. That way when it goes, you want to go to the, the actual loop, it doesn't like jump to a different conclusion or jump to a different conclusion, uh, jump to conclusions. You know, that is, uh, anyway, jump to a different, uh, little effect. You want to make sure it keeps that sort of like subtlety sort of like, you know, you don't see the transition being re you know, sort of like re looped or replayed. Right. So I'm gonna say this looks pretty good. So the other effect that I did is under effects as well. It's under, I'm gonna make sure I click on the word soon, by the way under effects as well, under transition again, and it's called linear wipe. Now this right here is just a very simple little wipe that I ended up doing was making the word kind of like move in this direction, a very simple linear moving. Um, I'll just show you guys really quick, right? Just simply just moving like this, kind of like almost like a, like a text writer, sort of like a little simple, just literally moving left and right. So what I ended up doing was making my completion at zero frames, just simply at zero and that make that little keyframe. And now I'm gonna press on my keyboard to bring these up. So it's right there. I'm gonna say right about here, I'm gonna bring this completion. No, that not not this one. This one's no longer the linear wipe one. I'm gonna move this one, just like so, over to around here. <sighs> then I'll say right about here. I'll make it go back to zero, and then right about let's say here. So you see how I what I ended up doing is kind of like making sure I complement how far over the actual first little of the square effect is. See how far it is for the right. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna say hey, my next completion. I'm gonna make this go all the way over there. And then right before it ends there, I'll make sure it goes all the way back. Now you can make it super fast. You can make it do a little more quicker jumps. Let's say you did all your basic jumps, right? I'm only kind of working at six seconds right now, I know. Um, but just be careful, you just literally just go as far as you guys gotta want, um, or as far as your actual composition settings are. I'm kind of going with the flow here, and it's just showing you guys how to do it, and kind of like then just, it's literally, you guys know at that point what you would do next over, right? So I'm gonna say, you can see how my completion is. I would say like, see how right here it says zero, right? And it goes up to around where is it right here it stops at around uh 40 or 39 right here basically 40. uh what i'll do is say hey right around here you can even just kind of make a jump from let's say zero to like 14 here so it'll kind of have this really quick little jump you know kind of uh, uh, i guess you would say complement the whole little uh glitchy effect right now it looks pretty good right there honestly and it didn't jump because why? Because this is at zero and this should have been at 14 or 15 and this should have been at zero. There we go, a little bit better. All right, so it's kind of, kind of just gonna make this little quick little jump. And what I just did right there doesn't really need to have to like, you don't have to do exactly what I do, but let's just do it one more time just for the sake of the actual video. I um, just wanted to let that render out so you can see what happens at the beginning. Just watch my little cursor right here. You'll see when it goes through, kind of goes back really quickly and it goes back to continuing on what it should be, uh, what should be done. So I'm gonna do one more time, is you'll see that my linear currently is like right around here. It's going through the O right now. So I'm gonna say right here, we'll do one more time. I'll just make sure my completion goes from whatever it is. So I'm a keyframe, wherever it is, boom. Go one keyframe up. Now you can press also press page up and page down, by the way, um, to go up a keyframe and down a keyframe. So I'm gonna go up a keyframe, go to zero. And I'm gonna go uh, a few keyframes after, and then we'll go up again. And then a few keyframes after and go back down to zero and then what this is over here what is that over there cool perfect that's at 53 and we want to make sure it goes from zero to 53. so all i do is just add a keyframe to kind of make sure it just kind of like bounces really quickly back and you'll see that's what it does and like i said it does complement the whole little glitchy effect that's going on in the text itself now in the case if you guys have no idea what i just did because i didn't i didn't explain it as correctly as possible all i ended up doing was adding a couple keyframes four in total uh, well, I'll do it one more time. Let's just do it one more time because I feel like I just didn't explain that quick, uh, correctly. But right now we did our beginning keyframes, right? Where right now that transition is at one, which means all the way over here in the left hand side, and it's going through through the word soon 
right here is where it stops and just goes bounce back to being basically back at the zero endpoint, which I should suggest again, make sure you end it off, whatever you're doing, any effects, make sure you end off what you started off with. That way the jump and the whole little looping is not affected. But in between that, I wanted to make sure it kind of has another quick little jump to kind of affect um, to go uh, to go along with the glitch. So what I ended up doing was keyframe once again, wherever it is, it doesn't really matter. Keyframe right here, go up a frame with page down, just like so. Go ahead and just make this now zero, right? So it's kind of like making, giving you your own little reset. I'm gonna go ahead and go up a few frames. I'm gonna go ahead and just make my completion, let's just say like 13 or 15 or so. Go up again a little bit more, and then simply just go back to zero. And that's going to basically reset it for you guys so that way from at zero at the end point you already know that this is at another like 60 or 45 you see it's at 30 it's at 40 uh 53. so that's basically what i did just kind of just added a few little quick little adjustments in the between it so it kind of just makes it all random um and honestly you didn't even have to follow a formula in that you can probably just make it random as much as you guys want maybe not knowing what i did is better off you gotta get a better effect i have no idea but i'm just kind of fooling around there but that's just how i had i did the little simple effect for the actual word um, soon, so you can see it when it loops up, you'll have that little effect happening, right? Nice and very subtle, very quick, a uh, little starting soon, and then once again, it'll loop again, and so on and so forth. And now, if you guys want to, I'd probably say I would speed up what's happening with the linear wipe here. So I'd say right where the transition is or the completion is, I would say if you guys want to, you guys can go ahead and right click when you highlight the actual keyframes, right click, excuse me, one of them, and go to where it says Easy Ease, go to your little graph editor here. And then make sure your graph editor looks like mine. If you guys doesn't, you gotta right click the graph itself and make sure you're actually using the actual speed graph. Some of you guys might be using default the value graph. You wanna make sure you use the speed graph. Highlight these three keyframes and just simply take one of these on the first one and just kind of move this. No, we'll move, um, eh, we'll move, yeah, we'll move this one on the left hand side a little bit further in the middle here. There we go. And I'll see how that looks. And it should be a little more quicker, not so like kind of like stagnant. And I kind of have a, a more of a smoother transition. It's kind of how you want to have it. You can you can easy ease things that you gotta you you would I guess suggest you would you 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 would <laughs> where's that fucking meme is so good. Oh, uh, I love that one. Sorry. Anyway, I just would say use easy ease as much as possible because if in, in situations like I said the completion it might make the actual animation a little more smoother. And I would say yes. See how like a little smoother it is. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference, but it's definitely smoother if you guys want to like not trust me in that. Don't trust me, but look at it yourself, I guess what I'm saying. But I guess that's it for the tutorial today. All I ended up doing is just doing the glitch, uh, glitch effect for the actual text in the middle, and also the whole little soon, starting soon sort of thing on the bottom here, which can be any word whatsoever. Maybe it's the game you're playing, you wanna make it like have like a cool little highlight. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video here today. As always guys, I know you guys love the little Twitch series that I do. Um, of course, be in mind as well, when I say starting soon screen and or Twitch graphics, that does mean your text is subject to change. This can be ending as well. This can be intermission. I know I said at the beginning in the video, hopefully I did. Uh, but if I didn't, just understand that it's not just exactly what I show here. Change the colors, change the shapes, change the uh, letters, change the assets you put around it, change the fonts. It'll it'll just make that more and more and more what you create on your own. And I know you guys understand that, but I hope you guys as well understand that this is a really cool concept. I really hope you guys take, take it forward. Uh, okay, I'm done talking because your boy talks way too much and I gotta go. So yeah, I'll tell you guys later. Since HQ out, don't keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking productive guys. Later.